will works through every moment. That's where we find our holiness. Day in and day out, every moment is holiness. While you are listening to me so patiently, this is holiness. Holiness is, at the present, is in the present moment. And I realize one thing, and I'm getting more convinced of this. There is no fear in the present moment. Fear is when you look at the future too much, and when you stay at the past too much, then you become afraid. Ano ba kaya din namin mamaya? Buhay pa kaya si nanay pag-uwi ko? Future. Present is worryless. Actually, if you want to feel it, you can feel it right now. Right now, without thinking of the future, immediate one, and in the past. Ngayon, while you are listening to me, is there anything to be afraid? Nothing. Look, you are just as you are. No fear, no terror, serenity, and peace. God's will is in every moment. And if I realize the wisdom of these words, then Christians are happy all the time. My happiness is unconditional. It's not because something has to happen that I will be happy. Father, sasaya lang ako kapag hindi na lasengo ang aking asawa. Pag hindi na lasengo ang iyong asawa, then you will be happy. What if lasengo pa rin siya? So you will be unhappy all your life? Oh no. My happiness does not depend on his conversion. I'm sorry to say this bomb before you. I cannot surrender my happiness. To anyone. Even Jesus said that. I am suffering terribly, but it's not because of this suffering that I will lose my peace of mind and I will lose my courage. Remember the Garden of Gethsemane? Get up. Let's face my betrayer. There he is. He is coming. Face life as it is. Now I understand why Jesus is saying and is oozing out love. Because in love, there is no fear. You will tremble, you will suffer pain and so much misery, but no one is going and you will not, you will not allow anyone to stop you from leaving. And I will end my sharing with a story. The story of a friend of mine who was also a student years ago. And we met in front of one piazza in, in front of our university. And he told me this story. Steve, you know what? I have a girlfriend. And I said, nice. So one time I planned my proposal to her. So I bought a good diamond ring. It's from the United States. I bought a diamond ring. It's from Philadelphia. And then I called up my girlfriend and told her, let's meet in this restaurant. I, I have a surprise. Of course, the girlfriend did not know anything about the future engagement. I mean, the ring that this man brought and bought for her. So at that time, before the meeting, he was already like practicing the script. The script of engagement is, Meredith, will you marry me? He better practice kneeling down. Will you marry me? <coughs> Put on the necktie and, Meredith, will you marry me? Okay, nice. Uh, one look at the mirror. Meredith, will you marry me? So, they met in the restaurant, and in the restaurant they had a nice dinner, and they had a wonderful conversation until that moment. So he got the small box of ring out of his pouch, and according to script, he knelt down, 
opened the box and said, Meredith, I would like to become a priest. <laughs> <laughs> he swore. I didn't know what I was saying. And so the girlfriend said, what? And then my friend said, what? Oh, hey, hey, repeat, re repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> Meredith, I want to be a priest. It happened three times. He didn't know why. And he told me, that night, I left hardly from the dinner. I went back home, looked at the mirror again, and said, who is this man talking? To cut the long story short, he became a priest. And Meredith, she got married. And my friend, that time I asked him, swear to God that your story is true because I'm going to share it to the people in the Philippines. <laughs> and he said, I swear. And I said, tell me, how is that even possible? And he said, I don't know. God wants Jesus on Golgotha. My friend is called by God unexpectedly to a life which she did not even think. If Jesus had a choice, and in fact he said that, take this cup away from me, he would have chosen it. But he didn't. God is alive. After talking to this guy, God is alive. My goodness, can't you see that? I started with my question to Siri, a robot, and to Lasso, a human being. In this Holy Week, it's such choice to celebrate the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as a robot. Yes. I heard this so many times over. Okay, I will go to the Holy Thursday celebration, Good Friday Station of the Cross, as a robot, automatic. I know it by heart. But the emotions, the pain of my life, and the joys as well, is that part of that as well? I choose. I choose what I'm going to bring in this celebration. To hide behind the meta, to hide behind my intelligence, to hide behind what I want to hide, the innermost part of myself. Or I would choose rather to be a human being, to show my vulnerability before the Lord, to show Him my fear, why not my goodness? I have suffered a lot. And Jesus, I know, I cannot hide anything from you, so be it. I'm going to tell it to you, just the same. But more than just the sharing of suffering, it's the sharing of this experience of salvation of Jesus Christ. He decided for that. He raised up. He was raised up by the Father for His decision. And so the garden, once again, in Gethsemane, what do I see? Jesus, really man, really God, experiencing the full gamut of his, of his emotions, of his humanity, and yes, of his divinity. Deeper in prayer, greater in love, bolder in mission. Look at Gethsemane. He's that, rolled into one. So I am going to leave you with the following questions for you to consider. Three questions that might help or might not help. It's up to you. But the first one, which did you receive in which you are most tested? The second is, what keeps you going in difficult times? Jesus said it so, at least for himself. Abba. Father. Jesus died for his Abba. 
for his father. He said that, not my will, but yours be done. So, implication, father, I'm going to die for you. And finally, how have sufferings made you grow deeper in prayer, greater in love, and bolder in your mission, just as Jesus was? I think more than just celebrating automatically what's going to happen in this beautiful celebration of the Triduum of the Lord's Passion, Death, and Resurrection, we will benefit much from this if we put our humanity into this and find ourselves saying before God and before our neighbor, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And with that, I wish you all, may Jesus Christ bless you. Thank you very much.